yesterday, and we have a lot of fun today, planned for every viewer. But uh, Insomnia, and uh, RDU was telling people that he wasn't aware that there is such a big event in UK. Raven, this is Insomnia 56. What happened in the, in the latest 55 Insomnias before? <laughs> okay, so I've not been going to Insomnia that long, um, unfortunately, but I've been from uh, Insomnia 49, so I started that a couple of years ago now. Um, it's just a great event for the UK. Uh, the fact that we have a big LAN event that runs tournaments across multiple games, it's not just Hearthstone that's here, it's actually uh, you know all the popular esports games. And it's uh, consistently well run, everything always goes pretty well, the venue's fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's great for the UK scene overall. It, it really seems like a small dream hack. When you when you first enter, there's a lot of people just with their PCs, right? Set up. Yeah. Eating stuff, drinking energy drinks. Yeah, it's full yeah. game. Hack, full <laughs> yeah. game hack. Absolutely, but for gamers. I, I'm sure that during uh, Insomnia One, the first one, I'm sure they were still playing Quake One without mouses, just on keyboards. In keyboards, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember those times. Those so awesome old. times. Oh but, man, uh, you're old. <laughs> I saw a guy yesterday who actually came here over uh, one day prior. You could actually come in to set up your PC. And he was already, you know, awake 24 hours when the event started. I'll have to check up on him because I don't think he'll <laughs> make, make sure it through still the weekend. Okay. It is insomnia, man. Like, <laughs> right. we just don't, don't sleep. sleep. All That's the time. what you do. Yeah, and you, so. you can see the setup behind us a bit. Like, uh, kind of, there are people yeah. with computers playing all those games. So it's pretty exciting, guys. It's pretty exciting. There's and a lot of people. Yeah. And this is the first time we're actually going global with Insomnia um, and presenting it to, to all the viewers. I mean, we, we, you probably could have seen Insomnia before, but it was UK only mostly. Yeah, now that it's opened up, especially, you know, like bringing in invites from some of the best players uh, around the world, really, yeah. it's uh, really huge, especially for Hearthstone doing this. So this is going to be a big tournament yeah. and uh, hopefully we'll see more of this in the future. Yeah, hoping so. And it's a big step for those um, UK players who qualified as well, because this is their, their chance as local guys to get known uh, globally and playing versus people like Life Coach, like Thais, RDU. Yeah. It's uh, not like only that, but the, the tournament itself has a really huge prize pool. It's nothing to scoff on. It's 30k, thousand dollars. The first place gets like 10,000. Right? Yeah, 10,000 first place, uh, 5,000 second place. But for those guys, it might be important that actually top 16 is getting money as well, because uh, yeah. if you if you if you're in top 16, you're already in the money. 650, um, 625. 625, yeah. That's something. That's uh, yeah, something, man. Especially it, if you're just local and you just it, came here. Yeah, it's more than some people have made in their careers in esports. Yeah, that's in true. some <laughs> cases. So, how much Frodan did, Aaron? I, I actually did not know. He he got a Ferrari though. Oh yeah, I can. I think he'll he'll be just fine. Yeah, but it was like a small <laughs> one, so you know. Yeah, that's it's, that's it's the first step. Sure. I'm I'm interested though, like um, Raven, for a UK person and a gamer, how important some is. Uh, it's really important, especially now. I mean, uh, in general, there's just not a lot in the UK. The esports the e scene's very small uh, compared to some other countries like Germany, uh, Sweden, uh, uh, the obvious ones in Europe. Um, but for the UK, it's just like I said, it's great. And the fact that it's growing every single time there's an event, it gets bigger, it gets better. Uh, like the tournaments have become bigger, bigger prize pools. So, yeah, it's just it's just super important for the players to get exposure. Yeah. All right. They're also and starting to... Battleborn's first tournament, I think, is happening here as well, which is a really big first step. Uh, considering the game is kind of awaited by a lot of players. So the event itself is pretty huge. Yeah, they announced they are expanding to Scotland and Ireland, I believe, as well. Yeah, that's going to be next year, I believe, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So more insomnias for us and more insomnia for uh, for you guys. And uh, we are almost ready with the with the first match. The first match is going to be AK Wonder versus RDU. And uh, we've seen RDU already talking about insomnia a lot What What can you tell us about RDU? RDU is a very young and talented player who likes to analyze the games and talk about it a lot. Yeah. I would summarize him like in those mm -hmm. few, few words, you know? He, he's a, a, uh, after a game, he has an essay wrote, uh, written already. <laughs> and, uh, every game, not every <laughs> match, every game, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's something really unique because <laughs> what I like and what I would like love to see him do more is an actual report on, on tournaments. Uh, he had a really good job doing it uh, after ATLC. He, had, um, he wrote also uh, another piece recently on our site on g2esports.com and. Uh, Shame. <laughs> <Shuffle, laughs> <Shuffle, plug. laughs> right? Yeah, and um, he's really doing a great job at that. And that's what I missed the most from the TCG times we played. Uh, Articles. Games, right? Yeah, the written reports. Yeah, those were really sweet to read. Right. Like you just went, that was like a, let's say, a major tournament in whatever uh, tournament, uh, card game you played. And there were so many reports just to read what people played, what people, um, how people prepared, what was the top eight, what, uh, what are the deck lists and stuff. So, yeah. 
All right, and AK Wonder from uh, Spain, uh, one of the best Spanish players at the moment, playing for SK. And I think they faced the, um, each other before. Noxious, before you leave us, because Noxious will be leaving right. us for the first match. Any any last words about this matchup? What would you like to see? At least Starseeker and Druid from RD. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> it's not happening, but I'm hoping. But we can always dream, right? Yeah. It's, it's semi-decent in mid-range, but unfortunately, maybe not. All right, not fingers enough. crossed. Um, thank you so much, Noxious, then, and see you for the, for the next match. Yep, be back. All right, guys, now we have the Mulligans. Uh, we didn't talk about the lineups that much, but uh, both players brought Warlock. There is uh, Paladin as well, and the only difference is Druid versus Warrior. Well, we have two Warlocks lining up for the first game, and it looks like RDU, uh, RDU is bringing a zoo, uh, yeah, what's an up? ordinary zoo, at least for now. And then we have a... Sure. Will it be a Reno Jackson Warlock? It, it's really difficult yeah. to say, like from the just opening <coughs> hand, no when yeah. you can see Brand Bronze Give me a minute. and Dark Pedal, because both of those cards can be played in uh, Malaga's Warlock and Reno Jackson uh, uh, Warlock at the same time. Uh, and we have seen even um, versions of Reno Warlock with two Molten Giants. Yeah, there's always a chance. And uh, what do you think about like the re like the earlier versions? I'm not seeing people play it too often, but the double molten giant for me is always scary. Cause it's oh, yeah, like, yeah, if yeah. you don't draw them, Reno's pointless. That's true. But then if you draw two molten giants and don't draw Reno Jacks, then it's way better. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. So we do see Bran. There's still nothing too much to give away there. Um, but what do you think about how do you start actually? He's got a pretty decent start. He has the creeper into egg. And um, and even a power of woman in hand to be able to buff the egg and proc it for a trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Just had a couple of <laughs> couple of technical issues then. Uh, but we do see RDU is going to drop the creeper down. And uh, yeah, this is looking more and more like. Uh, would you would you say this is Reno Lock Lothar? Oh, just drawn into the fast here again. It's still a bit difficult. There are some hand locks yeah, that still play that. I... Oh, Sir Finley. Well, you don't want to take that as this yeah, as yeah, pretty much any warlock deck, right? That's one of the uh, cards that you can't really take when you're playing that that kind of warlock, as you rely so much on uh, on just drawing cards. You can't really you, you can't really um, change your change your hero power. And uh, I think the Farseer actually gives it uh, out that this might be just Malagos Malagos warlock, but the inclusion of molten giants is so weird. Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, that's the thing with it, especially a lot of decks at the moment. There's um, there's so much variation in the game uh, with the different uh, with the League of Explorers adding so many different deck archetypes. So it's a real tough one. I mean, what do you even want to pick at this point in the game? He does go for Finley. What? Wow. What's the game plan here, though? Because surely uh, most Warlock decks, the whole point of the thing is that everyone thinks that the Warlock hero power is the best in the game because it allows yeah. you to cycle through your deck quicker. I actually pick uh, Warlock's hero power a lot for Shaman, sometimes even Hunters, uh, because if you want to have more consistent threats, you can just tap into and get more cards. Yeah, so. you can just draw on yeah. demand. So that's always nice. So the Peddler is going to challenge the Creep a little bit, but the egg going down seems Ooh, really OK cool. with the Direwolf Dye Alpha in hand as well. He can even buff and kill off the uh, the Peddler next turn if he really needs to. That's true, but look at that. AK Wonder did draw a Silence right now, and I think this is the best moment to cast it. Yep. It's just, when you think about it, you just deal four damage to a minion, and you don't, don't, you don't need to exchange any damage and so there's and also loss. one of the issues is just silencing it and not being able to kill the egg still isn't perfect because it's still a body that yep. can be buffed and what you know obviously zoo runs power overwhelming and the the uh, die wolves that we can see to give the extra damage there so killing it off is really good it's whether and oh, void terrors too yeah yeah very true do, do you even play finley now i am super confused about the finley pick i have no idea why he did, did he did pick the finley he's not even playing it right now and i think uh it's it's I will have to ask him, you know? Because I'm yeah, we're going to have to ask him it. already. There's, there's a query so in the game. It's so weird to pick the Finley right now when when you can't really play it at any given point of the game because you have the Molten Giant in the head. Yeah. You need to be tapping, especially against Zoo, because Zoo is not that explosive. So if you want to bring your down, yourself down to like around 12 HP, I guess you would have to tap at least two, three times. Yeah. And that leaves the, the Finley, the Finley um, completely obsolete. Yeah. 
late game. And that's so one of the win conditions, isn't it? For this, this matchup, you get the big taunts down and Zoo is, uh, has a, a problem dealing with them and punching through yeah. anything like a taunted Molten Giant without, if they're using power overwhelmings to punch through those and they're not using them to actually kill you. So that's definitely yeah. one of the ways you can win. Yeah. Um, and now he has Molten Giant into Healbot potentially later on, which is a really good light turn. If you can get the Molten Giant for free and then heal back up uh, uh, with eight more health and even Bran, so. It's looking like although Wonder picked the Finley and we're not quite sure what his game plan is long term with that. He does uh, he does have some good combos in hand to be able to deal with the uh, aggressive Zoo deck. Mm -hmm. And now he also uses the uh, Farseer to heal up uh, his Dark Peddler. That means he pushes RDU from his of course from his perspective. He pushes RDU to use the Dark uh, I'm sorry the the M Gang boss to kill the Dark Peddler. But we know that RDU has the Direwolf Alpha. It can have can have a perfect trade here and yeah. even tap if he doesn't want to play the Hunter Creeper. But with the uh, Doomguard in hand, I would say you would like to empty your hand as soon as possible. Yeah, you don't want to fill your hand up because you can't reliably uh, know you're going to draw into Void Callers quick enough. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like that as well. And especially with the Die Wolf Alpha buffing like the Creeper and then the tokens that it's going to proc, it's a, it's a pretty good play there. And Wonders have gone into a, uh, it's tapped into a zombie tile, something he's probably looking for a little bit early in the game. Yeah, of course. Like Zombie Chow is the best one-drop minion in the game. Uh, uh, well, unless you're playing a secret paladin and you have a secret keeper in your opening hand, because uh, that's like even even better than the Zombie Chow. But for for RDU, for for RDU to win this game, what he has to plan is just to burst down um, AK from the point when he is not able to play the Molten Giants. But at the same time, from the cards that he has seen right now. He can't really read that there might be a Molten Giant even in the, uh, in the opponent's hand. So my assumption here will be that RDU will just deal damage and not care about possible yeah. Molten Giants because he will not anticipate one. And especially seeing Bran, like this is something that's super common in Maligos. Yeah. Uh, Warlock. So so far, and the, the and positive. The yeah, the positive yeah. thing about when you play against Maligos Warlock as an aggressive deck, it can be a rough matchup, but you presume the Molten Giants aren't there, so you just go hyper aggressive mm -hmm. and try and kill them quickly. But also for AK Wonder playing Bran on an M just just wow. dropping him always feels terrible. His his effect is can be so powerful with cards like Healbot that it's kind of rough to just drop it as a two four and like hope it's yeah, well, enough to slow down. It is rough, but at the same time, he doesn't even have that hand that will benefit Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just goes for the survival mode. He just needs the cards uh, that will just um, soak some damage in the, in the early game and allow him to build up to the late game himself. One light drag also too late. The turn four was perfect for that card, but uh, I feel like it He's being pushed to use Tap and Twilight Drake in this situation, or just Finley, Zombie Chow, Twilight Drake to play as many minions as possible so you can maybe have something on board for the next in Shadow Flame. Yeah. It's so difficult to, to, to make a decision. Yeah, here. I think at this point, because he's seeming quite far behind without any easy AoE options to clear mm -hmm. the board, uh, playing Finley might actually work out okay because he might not get to the point where he needs to tap into Molten. He'll yep. actually just, his opponent's being aggressive enough that he can just get away with uh, just playing the Molten later on due to the opponent's damage. So I don't mind just dropping as much on the board as possible at this point. He is going to go. Oh, oh, and, uh, oh Hellfire. Hellfire. Okay. Will it change his game here? But you want to hold off one more turn for the Hellfire and try and get like the trades out? If oh. you could choose it. I mean, he probably won't trade with the Drake though. So the only thing you're going to do is uh, is kill the Voidwalker, which exactly. isn't going to do too much. So maybe help your Hellfire now. I would say you should probably use Hellfire now because you will damage your own uh, Twilight Drake unless you plan to play the Shadow Flame. And Shadow Flame will uh, kill the whole board, including Nim Game Boss. So maybe it's better to, to just plan a Shadow Flame because you anticipate there will be no trades from RDU, right? For, for to, to, With the Solar Drake, unless so there will be a really good um, PO target for that. Yeah. The real frustration here for Wonder is that Voidwalker. It's blocking the uh, like the better attacks into the minions like the Creeper. Mm -hmm. They're going to sort of survive the AoE with the Death Rattles or even the Imp Gang boss leaving a 1-1 up. Mm -hmm. So uh, he has to sort of attack in or just Shadow Flame like you said. And either way, there's going to still leave some tokens on the board. Oh, he's, is he going to just kill it? Yeah, and he's playing around Shadow Flame. Oh, fair enough. He can just follow. You just slam Doom Guard, right? I think he does. Not too, too upset about losing the dog. And this means... Oh, 
that IK Wonder will be able to play the Mold Clan for zero mana and pair it up with a Shadow Flame if he needs that. Is there anything else he can do? Because the problem is, even though if he Molten Giant and uh, Antique Heal Bot, then he's just taking even like he's taking the damage he heals for plus extra, and you yeah. never know what your opponent's going to tap into. Although he's got no cards. And Doomguard. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> although the, the Zulok's got no cards, oh, the li he can just freely live tap. He's on 30 health, so he's not actually. Uh, Live tap once yet, so he can just draw two cards next turn. And the likelihood of Zoo having some kind of extra burst in two cards is pretty likely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, from RDO's perspective, it's looking pretty damn good, but the Molten Giant will change something here. And I think the Shadow Flame has to be played. Yeah. Even though it leaves three minions on board, I think you have to, to just kill that Doomguard instantly. You have no minions to taunt it up. So. You, you just have to follow it up with uh, with the Finley into maybe a armor up or um, we see your power. Here we go. What are the options? That is the heal. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> snap pick on the heal there. Don't blame him at all. And uh, Shadow Flame, like you said, is going to clear up. There's a couple of tokens left, but the Finley and the Zombie Chow kind of deal with those. Oh, is he not going to play the Chow? He the, the well, heal that's more. really weird. Because I would say that if he wants to make a comeback as soon as possible, because the Hellfire seems to... Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> what I just said! <laughs> so he didn't even need to tap for it, so now he can play Doomguard and tap into an extra card without having to throw it away, so... Yeah, but there's uh, Siphon Soul waiting for, for that Doomguard, so... Um, AK Wonder will be able to heal up to eight and kill one of the minions, and that means he can actually... Just a slow comeback now? Yeah, he can actually stabilize now. The Finley proves to be useful, very, yeah. very useful right now. It just felt kind of weird picking it that early when, like, literally the start of the game, you're like, yeah. ooh, okay, I'll pick Finley. And he didn't when have he had Soulfire as well. Well, he didn't have uh, sh he didn't have Fire. He didn't have the Shadow Flame yeah. at that point, so it was really weird for, to pick it up. Nice but uh, double Argus to uh, draw Argus into really now the Void Walker. Oh, you, you can tap every single turn. Drop two threats per turn and deal a lot of damage. I really like if he will be trading here. Uh, I guess he doesn't want to give any options for AK Wonder to buff the minion, uh, to play another Shadow Flame. He's not certain what kind of deck AK Wonder is sporting, so I really like that. Yeah, this is going to be a nice hell. Oh, you okay, so it's going to be a nice Hellfire into a heal, but I imagine this turn. Um, so he's going to clear the board up, leave a 3-3 on the board. Not too bad versus Zoo, actually. Like, 3-3 mm -hmm. can actually deal with a lot of the minions they put down. Obviously, not some of the bombs, like uh, if there's a Dr. Boom or even a Malganis or anything like yep. that in the deck. PO draw, not Ooh. really not really that helpful. Yeah, and even the Argus doesn't do too much he here. Just so needed a, he just needed two minions, basically. Yeah. But that's what he needed. And suddenly, Implosion and is that... Fugan, right? Yeah. This is looking rough because next turn he can follow up with Argus on the Fugan, and what's uh, what's Ardu you going to do? How, with yeah, two Doom Guards gone as well, well how is he actually going to push through this damage? There's not no not much you can do. So, what side are you going to draw into? The abusive doesn't do much here. The life tap into his other his, his own implosion actually, but again, well, no, he had no, to use it. Yeah, no oh. real way to deal with this uh, Fugan though. And he's only on 13 health now. Well, there's a zombie chow. He can kill the zombie chow and get it back to 18. But at the same time, it's a, <laughs> it's a really tough spot for, for RDU. And, we've not and even seen, he even needs to... He's not even seen Reno yet. Oh, and there we go. Okay. All right. First so game AK goes Wonder. to AK Wonder. Yeah, AK Wonder wins the first game. I'm back, by the way, guys. Uh, it's a pretty interesting game overall, I think, with, uh, with this comeback. Finley, healing, and... And even even though uh, there was a Doomguard top deck, Siphon Soul yep. dealt with that pretty easy. Siphon Soul shut it down. Uh, imagine the game before the Siphon Soul over. The, oh well, if the Doomguard was even less uh, less uh, probable than, than the Siphon Soul, right? But uh, it was a back and forth, and uh, the Finley made a difference. So kudos to to AK Wonder for picking it up. But at the same time, I think it was very questionable decision to take the Finley in the beginning of the yep. game, where. Uh, just a slight more damage from RDU uh, from RDUs in the beginning of them will have mean end an end of it yeah, so already. So far, was an option. Yeah. Well. So yeah. He could have uh, done that, but uh, but also the um, playing the Reno deck and drawing into the two AOE in the form of Hellfire and Shadow Flame relatively early yeah. without too many live taps as well. 
And that was pretty big impact to be able to clear the ball. You get Reno though, and there was always a chance of just getting that Reno and slamming it to yeah. heal yourself to full. Uh, so this means that RDU can't use his zoo anymore. His zoo got killed, and uh, AK Wonder will have to continue with the Reno lock. So we are going to see another game with the Reno lock because this is that hero standing. This is not conquest. Mm -hmm. Now Adiu knows what he's up against as well, so he'll probably alter playstyle to not be too uh, too all in. Because if if you overcommit and that Reno comes down, then it's going to be an issue. But is this Paladin with a Lepanome? Well, that means Adiu is bringing some really aggressive decks, and well, it it should probably work. It's I guess it's even better to play aggressive decks against the, those type of uh, Reno Jackson Warlocks which can bring some odd value to the table, like the Fugan Stalag combo yep. might shut down any um, any control decks with the <laughs> almost impossible to deal with 11-11 body unless you have a big game hunter. But that's like the only answer. And you do run out of big game hunters at some at point, some especially point, yeah. if you're molten giants. And the real issue is if you play both of the minions on the board at the same time and they die, it summons two 11-11s. So that's uh, twice as difficult to deal with. Yeah, that's right. So with the Leopard Gnome, it, it seems like RDU is playing kind of like a face Paladin with Divine Favor. It might be the case. We'll see how it goes. But the Zombie Chow mul Mulligan for AK Wonder will make a huge difference, especially that he is first in this game. So Zombie Chow for AK Wonder will probably make um, RDU switch his uh, switch his strategy for the opening. And we'll probably see a turn two massive battle instead of uh, a mini bot. So I guess this might mean the turn will, will be Lepernome, as predicted, but then turn two will be Massive Battle to kill all the zombie chow. Yeah, to be able to use the weapon yeah. to kill off the chow. Yeah. And um, that basically will allow RDU to take some um, take some some advantage from uh, from the early game. Yeah, unless there is something... Oh, Twisting Nether. Nice. I like this deck. This, <laughs> this deck can bring a lot of good cards to the table. Yeah, and even on the AK Wonder side, the, uh, the Farsi is going to be really nice just to drop down. If he, he's just seen the Lepinome, so already he knows something's a little bit off with this Paladin deck. It's not a standard pick in, say, Secret Paladin. Um, so maybe he's going to just play up the Farseer and then have Shadow Flame available if he, if he really needs, feels like he's under pressure. But at the moment, he's doing pretty well. That Zombie Chow, as you said, Lothar, turn one, pretty important in the aggro matchups. And that's his plan, basically, just stop the aggression early. And even if he takes the damage, he has so much heal available in form of that Farseer, heal bots, heal bots with Brand, Reno, Jackson, yep. and Siphon Soul as well. Well, the fact that um, he had the Zombie Chow added uh, did add about 4 HP points to his life total, so yeah. it was a really huge deal. Yeah, and every turn that goes by is a turn closer to drawing Reno, right? So, yeah. Uh, and as soon as Reno comes down against an aggro deck, it's going to be very difficult for him to claw the way back. And now, Artie, you can't really play on curve. He had 3 mana. Uh, goes with the Shield of but which is the best minion. And he, he got that Shredder for turn 4, which is really good as well. Shredder into Lothar. Brown Bronzebeard. There's a possibility to just clear the entire board right now, yeah, but I, I guess Implosion is much better, uh, especially if you get more than two on the mini bot. I assume that uh, AK Wonder will attack into the mini bot and then Implosion it. Yeah. Otherwise, he's being left with the brand, and I don't think he wants to play it right now. So. No, I think um, the, the either the Shadow Flame option or the Implosion option are good enough to not just play Bran onto the board. Um, the interesting go which so you prefer the implosion here, Lothar? I would say that I prefer the implosion. because uh, it would just be scary going to turn four versus Paladin. Because they probably even an aggro paladin probably still runs cancer play, right? Yeah, well, okay, that's a good point. But uh, at the same time you make your opponent play oh. consecration instead of anything else. Ooh. Well, that makes a huge difference. That's a nice collection the with Bram Bronsby Arena Jackson to explore us already. It's and so cool that he won with fin Finley like last game. <laughs> it's a, it's a very. That, this is an interesting situation because RDU doesn't want to trade at all with this deck, but this is a good trade. Yeah, offering such a good target. Yeah. Also, the problem is when you see one of the, these guys come down, you do kill it, but then you're so worried about the next one because again, you can't even though the next one say the less uh, threatening in terms of damage, uh, as it's a four seven. You can't really just leave it up a lot of the time unless he's so far ahead that it doesn't matter. But if you do kill it, like we said earlier, the 11 11's coming out to play, so... Was there a chance to not, not, not to just not to kill it? Because you've seen Shadow Flame, and if 
AK Wonder goes to phase for seven, do you really care? But uh, AK Wonder will trade with this minion. Yeah, yeah but then yeah. you do have the juggles. But maybe the fact that actually the juggles do not go to phase, but they can go into the minion. And he had two juggles this turn. Three juggles, actually. All right, so it makes a lot of sense to actually kill it. Hmm. Well, that will make a huge difference. Uh, is implosion a thing now? Yeah. You have to implosion the, uh, the juggler. Um, the problem is that there are two minions that are great at dealing with those 1-1 one -one minions. So... Oh, it makes sense, the implosion of the juggler. You just need to get it off the board this turn or it's going to snowball, I think. But the Twilight Drake's a reasonable pickup. You can maybe do something with it next turn. He is only on 19 health, so he's getting a little bit pressured. And we see Adi is actually playing... Jackson already oh, in the yeah, hand. I mean, that's fine. And you see, yeah, Adi is playing Blessed of Might. So, yeah, a bit of a new style we've not really seen in a, a pure, aggressive Paladin. In quite you, a while, actually. Is you know active, though? Like, what are normal use doubles? It must deck? be. If he's running Twisted Nether in the deck, Reno must be active, right? The well, only the only possibility is the double Molten Giant, yeah. but I would assume that he is not risking that much. There was a case with... Um, I, I think it was Surrender's deck, the yeah. first iteration. The double Molten? Yeah, the yeah. double Molten, but... It, it was not that popular after a few days of playing. Yeah. And everything else is a one-off. Yeah, right? yeah. I think you just, if you're going to play a Reno deck like this, because you've got to sort of battle with the one of issue and just the slightly unreliable nature of the deck, you need to at least have Reno guaranteed. So when you do draw into it, you guarantee that like back up to 30 health. But look at the situation. There's 11, 12, 13 damage on board right now. You probably have to Bran. And if you, if you play Bran and Defender of Argus, you will have um, three, four or six minion on board with Taunt. But at the same time, if there's a single silence, you'll probably be dead. So I wouldn't be, su yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes for the Reno Jackson right now. Yeah. And next it, turn, he can twist in there yeah. as well. If Reno is active, absolutely, just go for it. That's 16 heal. Yep. So this do, this does health. also signify that there's no double molten in the deck. It is just one of. And um, e but even so, just seeing Reno now, you kind of the only thing you're really worried about are the heal bots. Um, so, you know, is there an option to just ignore Reno and just go go all face? Or do you really want to trade? Oh, it's you a 6-1. Really okay, yeah. A six I, I just thought it was yeah. actually 6 attack. I thought it was 5. I take it all back. You definitely kill Reno. It was absolutely perfect. But on the, on the other hand, are you out of cards? He doesn't have any cards. There is a Twisting Nether. It uh, has a great animation, and a lot of players don't even know how it looks like. It looks amazing, definitely. Um, so in this style of deck from RDU, you've got to imagine he's running at least one Divine Favor. In the old yeah. versions of Aggro Paladin, you just had to run them out because there's no other card drawing yeah. in the deck. Uh, th uh, there has to be two Divine Favors, I would even say. Yeah. Uh, oh, it wouldn't surprise me if there was two, yeah. For RDU, of course, it would be the best draw, but Massive Battle wasn't that bad. I mean, he just filled the board after Twisting Nether, after Shadow Flames. There's only and... Hellfire left. Yes. That's so I, doubt, I think Fire people left. either play Demon Wrath or Twisting Nether. I'd be surprised mm. if people play both. He's going for Bran. I would probably like to see just Twilight Drake and Defender. Like, even Dr. Boom is fine here because... Oh, Are you man. expecting, what would it be, 9, 10 damage burst from the Paladin? Yeah, I would not expect that much burst. Yeah, e even an aggressive Paladin. They need, like, double... Well, he doesn't have any cards, so, like, one card burst isn't going to happen. But this is a nice uh, setup for Defender of Argus Siphon Soul for next turn, if already you pick something big. So he wants to have a lot of taunts, and Ardy is actually going to kill an owl. Also, AK Wonder wanted to remove cards from his hand as soon as possible, just to play around Divine Favor yeah. as little as he can. But it's always something. And it will, realistically, Divine Favor is probably one of the only things he's going to mm -hmm. lose to. But mm -hmm. there's Molten Giant for one into Argus with Bran. So, ooh, I don't <laughs> think Ardy can punch through that much damage. Yeah. I'm surprised he's waiting, actually. Good, he's I like mean, AK Wonder's obviously just uh, stacking up. Oh, okay, he's playing in that order to get the BGH down. Okay. Wow, and the Defend of Argus with the double um, double effect. So <laughs> casual 613. This is a 613 minion. It's suddenly aggressive. This deck looks really good. The Reno Jackson Ooh. Warlock. And Argent Squire, definitely not the card you want to draw into to go for the win. Uh, there comes. wasn't much he could draw into, right? Um, yeah, like probably there's no not much clear. If Divine Favor is probably the best because for some cards, but this kind of Paladin, I don't think it is, it has something like Twisting Nether, so you can't really <laughs> come back from this. Yeah. Maybe Equal and maybe equality. if there's like one equality yeah, in the yeah. deck just to, for these situations, but even then, 
what um, AK Wonder did was reduce his hand down to two cards, so even a Divine Favor wouldn't have been that big. Yes. I mean, it's, it's really um, interesting when you play against those type of decks, because you can play around certain strategies. Because you will be, you might be caught off guard by that by, by a card that is not usually played in the meta game. Like, in an example, the Twisting Nether. That was something Ardu didn't predict at all. He yeah. was visibly surprised by the fact that he will be uh, there will be a turn eight uh, Twisting Nether, and I don't blame him for playing all, all in because you can't really play against. You have to play all in, right? Yeah, you can't really play against a one-off. A uh, card in his opponent deck, especially if he already played Shadow Flame, yeah. and you know that it might be just Demon Wrath or Hellfire, but those were not enough to clear those minions. Yeah, absolutely. It's really hard to play versus toolbox decks because of that. So you just need to execute your strategy, and, and that's it. And AK Wonder had those cards. It, it's the charm of the Warlock's hero power because you can draw so much. You can uh, normally having only a one-off in your deck isn't as a downside. Because yeah. the deck is unstable, but if you draw so much, so many cards, it actually makes your deck okay. Yeah, and for the opponents, if they try and play around everything that's in a Reno lock, then you're not going to play much. Like, yeah. You're just yeah. not going to play any cards because there's so many different variations of what they can do. But it's going to be the lock versus Adi. He's just got his Druid left now. And this looks like, at least at the moment, fairly standard uh, mid-range. As we spoke about earlier, Druid has received uh, the Raven Idol. I think. Yeah. Was that yesterday? Day before? Uh, day before. Um, so, you know, there's always a chance that Adi has put one in there, but... Uh, it looks fairly standard so far. The Innovate with the Shredder. Yeah, he, uh, he did have Wild Growth as well. So he has the Ramp options, which is a really good start for IDU. Oh, man. I just wanted to say, like, he handles bad with the Wild Growth. But after picking Wild Growth, it's yeah. amazing now. He has the curve. He has everything he wants to pressure uh, AK Wonder. He even has Keeper of the Growth, which is really important versus that Twilight Drake. Yeah, and also in this matchup, uh, the Druid versus Reno lock, what's good is that because Druid can do the combo for so much burst, you can actually just float the Warlock at sort of half health maybe a little bit higher. And then it's like, well, if they Reno, then well, you don't. it's not like they Reno in against what's on the board. They Reno against a combo you may or may not have in your hand, but they have to play around it. So they won't get one, at, uh, a lot of the time, they don't get a Reno from two health because you will just kill them from that much health anyway. Yeah. You don't normally leave them on. Absolutely. And the Keeper of the Grove and using the Innovate to Hero power to clear off this Twilight Drake is really nice. That's that's really good for RDU. He is pressuring with the Druids. Uh, he's dealing damage. And he has a draw as well in his hand. He has everything for now. So how can AK Wonder actually defend himself? Well, the Dark Bomb is a solution to... a short-term solution to one of the minions on board, but it doesn't really do much afterwards. Peddler into Finley, go. <laughs> uh, still, it's, it's Peddler into Dark Bomb, I think. Uh, he can still Dark Bomb after drawing the card from Peddler. Oh, Mortal Coil is a really great pick here. Yeah, Coil is nice. It's one of the great additions to Hellfires in your hand, and he was missing that uh, that Mortal Coil. So it's one of the best drops you can get from Dark Peddler. Oh, and the 2-2 two -two from the Shredder actually matches straight up against the Peddler. So that's another bad pickup. And now uh, the Keeper of the Grove going to 2 health. Means Hellfire is a little bit better versus the board, but there's Taurus. And then not getting amazing cards in terms of the reduction of the, the Drake and the Lotheb and the uh, BGH, but still not bad at all on three cards yeah. uh, on curve. It will be it will be useful later, and uh, there is no way to deal with that Taurus on right now, because you can have Fire Coil, but it's not enough. It's only four damage. So this Taurus on is going to have another tick. Just want to say that AK Wonder again has an Arena Jackson right in his end, which changes the whole yeah. uh, way he will play this matchup. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if you will even bluff the fact that he has Reno Jackson with just playing Ancient Killbot uh, right now, uh, anti Killbot right now, because uh, that says to his opponent, you can go all in, you, you can yeah. damage, you can do whatever, because I don't have Reno Jackson in my hand. And I would really love to see that right now. Yeah, you want to let them overcommit and then play the Reno yeah. to go back to full. The only scary part is AK Wonder can't deal with the Thorson. And when Thorson gets two procs off, Mm -hmm. Definitely scary because suddenly you can just uh, force of nature double savage draw if they're the three cards in hand. Or the fourth is drawn into. Yeah, all the yeah, that gets like suddenly there's a lot of damage that can happen. But you will see that the Zor Drake was one that was hit. So now there's just three mystery cards that are going to be a lot cheaper for the two. With two ticks that you can double force that bit sometimes. Yeah, so it, it changes all the map. But uh, right now AK1 just wants to survive anyway. Hmm. Some kind of protect is okay for a little bit later, but I think... Do we have to see Reno now? This is the same situation as the uh, previous uh, Like, it's exactly 16. Two times, uh, AK Wonder used the Reno Jackson for exactly 16 health. 
uh, which is, makes it like a Bran and a Gilbert combo. Yeah. With, right? a, with a good body. Yeah. So, uh, in this situation, RDU has to play low tap this turn, just to secure the board that there will be no Shadow Flame and um, no. Well, actually, there, there was no. There's already one Hellfire played. So, does he have to play it? That's the question. Uh, he can attack for nine. He gets another tick, and then he will have a lot of good minions on board. Double spell damage because Thorson is still the, the primary target. So I see no reason not to play Lothab. On the other hand, you might want to keep Lothab for the Twisting Nether maybe before turn eight. But this board is so good, like you want to protect it. If there is a Shadow Flame, you don't want to risk the Shadow Flame. And this is one of the ways he's going to catch up on this health uh, that the Reno has given the Warlock. He needs to just play Lothab, lock out any uh, sort of AOE clear shenanigans, and then look at the power on the board. He can just like demolish him next turn. So this means that uh, Echo Wonder will be forced to play what, like Taunts? Thing. Well, he can go for the anti killbot and um, Sun Fury, and Sun Fury, but it, it, I think it's kind of too weak to the board because the free free minion will not change that much, and it will die to a ref, an example, and uh, after two ticks, that can be just zero mana. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for the Paladin Shredder into uh, Sun Fury Protector, uh, but yeah. This is uh, using the mana a bit better. Yep. I mean, this is still okay. Uh, he's just doing what he can to stay as high as possible. Ooh, but Savage Roar, how much damage is that? That's uh, 10 damage from that. Savage Roar. So you can use your hero to kill Reno Jackson. Then Donas' Aspirant kills the uh, anti-19 through taunts. Yeah. yeah. So at this point, because you've seen Healbot and you've seen Reno, is there a case because you have all these minions on board to just play Savage Roar? Clear I mean, the taunts and hit him for 19. Uh, probably Savage not. Roar is just three mana, ten damage. I would say you can you can abuse that. The, the thing is, like uh, as Raven mentioned before, you you want to have Warlock floating on some specific number of health and then finish them with the combo. So you want to get them low enough so that you can actually OTK them instead of just using the combo now and then facing yeah. another. Well, you know there is no another healbot, so healbot was already used. Yeah, and Reno's gone. Uh, I like just playing the Shredder though. Um, Ardu is not going to overcommit to the board, as you know. Again, twisting Nether's a card, so um, yeah, just playing the Shredder is at least going to survive to any AOE. He does Mortal Coil into an original Mortal Coil, um, but again, there's just there's just not much he can do here in terms of challenging the board. He just has to play Shredder and uh, Earthen Ring Farseer, I guess. And then he's dead with ten. <laughs> and nine, then he dies. Fifteen, yeah. Yeah, does fifteen damage just from the minions and ten damage from Savage Roar. So it's exactly lethal right now. All right, so it seems like Aryu is finally going to take this Reno lockdown after all those games, even getting Druid of the Claw. Just quickly count the damage to be sure. The Druid of the Claw even makes it <laughs> more powerful. So. Yep, let's just go for the extra damage, why not? Why not? Why not? Right? He has 10 mana, he can use everything. All right. It's 1-2. How do you take the... First game for himself, and um, does yeah. this mean there will be a comeback? Yeah, I mean, Druid. that's the 3-0 with Druid, right? So as long yeah. as he can draw into ramp, there's always that chance. It's just the, the rough moment where you don't hit any ramp in the first few turns, as Druid can get really difficult. And we're not sure what the rest of AK Wonders lineup is in terms of actual oh, yeah. deck style. So we've seen the Reno Lock do a pretty good performance so far. Um, and now we've just got to see what the other decks are. I did see, I think that you had Warrior. Paladin, yeah, yeah. Paladin and Warrior, isn't so, it? So Paladin and Warrior, yeah, because Ardu is playing Druid. So they had Paladin, they both had Warlock, and there's a Warrior. Um, yeah, the Warrior can be surprising. I, I would really like to see the Contra Warrior with Rafab. Yeah, that would be awesome. Like, I'm, I've not had a chance to play that card yet, but I'm quite quite looking forward to putting it into some, uh, to some good control decks for the late game. But this, I mean, not a surprise to see the Secret Paladin, to be honest. Um, the deck is still so powerful, even after League of Explorers, which uh, I suppose gave it Keeper of Alderman, which does some uh, does, does some nice things for the deck. Um, uh, just an extra little buff. Uh, a lot of Secret Pans have been playing it as at least a one-off. Yeah. Um, but in general, the deck's so powerful. If you curve with this deck, it's very difficult to lose. But on the other hand, you can whiff as well. And we see Aqua Warner having two secrets in the opening hand. This is not what you want. Uh, but then RDU has that wild growth and he has innovate as well with the coin. So RDU having a really good start. AK Wonder 
Not really. Yeah, kind of surprised a little bit that he's chose to play the uh, Noble Sacrifice there because although you expect your opponent to ramp, it is just going to soak up a hero power from the Druid. It's one of the uh, secrets that's a little bit weaker versus Druid because it can proc it so easily. Um, but also the Redemption could have been used to set up the Creeper to then respawn as a 1-1 and create even more tokens. But maybe he's playing the deck with only one Redemption and he wants to save it for a bit of a juicier target if he can set it up right before the Mysterious Challenger turn. Yeah. That, uh, that might be right. And also, maybe he's uh, not really fond of having Redemption on the, on the Creeper because of swipes. That's uh, true. But uh, he didn't pick up a free drop and he doesn't have a 4 drop still. So this looks really bad. There's a knife chuck there. That's actually pretty good. He will be able to deal some damage, attack with the Creeper into the, the Dreadlet Claw, deal some damage, and then still stun the Redemption. Yeah, the only problem with Redemption is he's probably going to run the Creeper in and then the... Uh, the druid can just take out a token with hero power. There's double sacrifice. I don't think he sacrifice. He will sacrifice it right now, I mean, unless he wants to bluff it. But uh, this will be so weird. Well, <laughs> there is the swipe incoming on turn four, so you always have to think about it. So you you risk if there is a swipe or not. The thing with this is that you do deal free damage overall with the juggles, and there is the noble sacrifice that will deal free overall because there is one juggle flying and then two damage from noble sacrifice. Yeah, the thing here is it depends how he lines up his attacks because if there was a swipe, then this is forcing the swipe onto the juggler, of course, which means the juggler is going to get redemption if he doesn't attack first. Because the problem with the attack is as well, if it spawns to get down, then it's going to throw another juggle as well. Oh, so Keeper the Grove onto 3-2 is pretty nice, but we're going to see redemptions hit there. So it's yeah. back, back to a 3-1. It's, it's manageable, but right now RDU will not be able to kill the juggler because there's double sacrifice unless he chooses not to attack. It's a little bit rough for RDU actually. Yeah, it actually worked out. The secret's actually just about worked out in the way he chose to the sequence then. Mm -hmm. Well, you there, couldn't there, really play around it. Was, uh, would you not have potentially attacked with the Druid of the Claw first? Hmm. Play around, that would have. Because you would be still be in the same situation, right? Yes. If you attack first, then. Well, the juggler's still alive, except it's on two health, but then you just keep it anyway, right? Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Maybe the attack first would, would have been a better option. I mean, uh, Ardu was playing into a. Avenge. Yeah. Uh, so the, the Avenge uh, then could have been silence instead of killing the juggler, I guess. But that's probably not. Maybe not he great. thought it's Avenge compared to the third. Mostly. He didn't expect redemption, double sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. That Cold Hammer, though, was a really great pickup, a great pickup for Ike Wonder. Yep, and now we can actually do turn 5, turn 6, instead of sort of struggling for these draws early uh, with the Paladin. So he's got a pretty good uh, follow-up, although RDU is building the board up. Although RDU doesn't actually have turn 6 uh, sorted at the moment. Oh, <laughs> Consecration! Yeah, I think... To do the shade. Value taking out the shade, right? Yeah, yeah, it seems really good at the moment. So you can clear the board, leave the 1-1 one, one taunt up, and then go into Mysterious Challenger next turn. I would favor the Loaded more. The, the body is just uh, a huge thing to, 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 to deal with, and if you just kind of follow up, you have a Loaded on board, you have a Mysterious Challenger, and you want to have more minions on board than just the lonely Mysterious yeah, Challenger. The mysterious challenger to if, go on. if the Mysterious Challenger would play it next turn, I bet you it will, you can just lose to a single Big Game Hunter. Yeah, if exactly. you will have Loaded on board, that's not possible. Because it might be, there will be still something. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. But on the other hand, it's really tasty to, to deal with the shade right away. And with the love up, he will have the turn seven play. This will mean that Mrs. Challenger will bring a lot of value right now. And RDU has to follow it up with Dr. Boom. There's no other way yep. to play it around. But at the same time, there will be a 7-7 seven, seven minion on board. And he doesn't have the Big Game Hunter to deal with that. So. I'm sure that AK Wonder will not care about the Dr. Boom, will just go face, straight to the face with, um, with the Mysterious Challenger, because that's how you want to win against the Druid. But he has to think about what if. Savage what if there, there will be uh, the savage, the, like double Savage Roar, so he has that Lothab right now to slow it down. Yeah, he has Lothab, so that's, that's perfect for him anyway. Just Lothab, Abuse the Surgeon, go face, and you're in a perfect spot. You play Creeper, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you would want the Avenge on the Creeper, I guess, as yep. the uh, optimum target. But this is nice. Do you bother trying to kill a Minibot just to make the trades a bit, a bit more difficult? It will, it will use two damage for face, but it's not really going to do anything to your minions. That's the positive, I suppose. If the Minibot hits any minions, it's fine. If it hits face, you probably don't mind too much. Maybe, Maybe as long board. as it's not for four. 
I like going for face to just deal as much damage as possible. There is a possible ancient of lore to heal, and um, you know noble sacrifice is not preventing Doctor Boom from attacking into one of your minions. Oh, he Didn't kept the weapon. Uh, I would probably attack with, because of a possible true silver, but maybe he's playing only one true silver. Swipe for nine mana. Not useful right now. It will make a huge difference with the Savage Roar draw. Like, a Savage Roar into the swipe here would have been a great situation for RDU. But now let's see whether the bomb hits. Okay. And it does free damage to low tap. Pushed into 10-9. Oh wow, is there is there a way to actually deal with it? Is can, well, he has to draw. heal. He can has to heal. Well no, you can savage draw trade, right? You can savage yeah. So savage draw trade the boom okay, into that's the also 10 good. nine and then the boom bot into the five two. That's probably the best actually, because just then you only have the spider to deal with. Yeah, that, that should be okay. I think although it feels doesn't feel great just savage drawing for eight mana, but this is his only out here. Oh he's just gonna heal. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's only healing and just Wants to kill AK Wonder on next turn, I guess. And there is wow. So that that's oh, why I would attacked. attack before, but this is six, seven, seventeen damage, so he's one off. <laughs> this is so close. And now he has to think, is there a way of are you killing me next turn? Yeah. And there's combo. So you combo against Drew, it's of course there's a way for them to kill him. <laughs> yeah. He's a twenty-three. Can't... Combo with Engine of Law on board deals twenty-one. And there's still Dr. Boom on board. You can clear and Boom and Ancient of Law, right? Yeah, you can, you can actually attack Boom. You can clear the board. Can you attack with the weapon into Boom? You take 7, you're at 16, so you're off the pure combo. But then you have to kill the Boom bot. Boom bot can be annoying there. I think can you if, play around the combo if you want to win? I think if you... Well, if you abusive sergeant the 1-2 to, to kill the Dr. Boom, put the 10-9 into the 5-5, five five, and then face tank the, the Boom bot with the True Silver, you heal for 2. Take one damage from the boom bot. Okay. And fingers crossed, the boom bot hits the two one or a token from the creeper. Because yeah. then you still have a ten four on board that he's seen that your opponent doesn't have a uh, a big game hunter. But he's just gonna go aggressive. So yeah, well, he set up a two turn 21. two turn lethal yeah. with that, right? But is he just dead to combo? No, no, that's twenty four actually. He's one off. So that's really good math from making one side. Now let's see unless that's innervate. Nope. So now RDU has to use hero power to not to die um, to the attack from the True Silver Champion here. Mm -hmm. So Swipe's he has to use Swipe and then run the 5-5. Five and five. run the 5-5 five five into that. And uh, hero power and Darnus' Aspirant. That's basically it. Like the Aspirant was a really good draw. Yeah, because yeah, something to put can something actually put on the board. On, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what RDU will do. But I, I, think, I don't think there's any other way out of this. Because you need to armor up, otherwise you're dead to the True Silver Champion. Yeah, yeah. and you know True Silver Champion is important. But uh, what are the outs for AK Wonder to win? He just needs one more damage. So this a second might be rough though. So the, yeah, there's, he's used one Consecrate. Uh, he, he can, yeah, Muster won't do it over time because the hero power will negate it if he can continue to play the one ones. So Paladin's going to struggle to draw some burst actually. I guess Other than the, another true consequence. Tyrion, Tyrion is fine if he gets Tyrion here. Pilot Shredder is not enough, but now how much damage does RDU have with, this, with the combo? Well, That's 21. 21 so. damage, so he's still one off. Yeah, he's still one off. And you probably go for face because you can pick up another weapon unless he's playing only two weapons. And he needs to count the, ma count the damage here. That's, <laughs> that's a tense situation <laughs> for both of both players. Yeah. Uh, AK Wonder can't really lose damage here. He can't attack into the Darnus Aspirin, at least in my yeah. opinion. It's so funny, though, because RDU is like on one health, essentially, and AK Wonder is 21, and they are both one damage of lethal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's actually true. Will Druid do Druid things? He needs an Innovate yeah. for next turn. <laughs> That the precious he, innovate. He's already used one, right? Yes, he's he one. Out the of the he can also get a Raven's Idol oh, to no. get an innovate. <laughs> uh, if that happens, <laughs> if that happens. Oh, just Raven's Idol into Living Roots. Oh, yeah. No, so, no, no. Oh, no, because he used one mana, won't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. He needs the innovate. A oh, second okay. force of nature. Well, so he can clear. Yeah, he has to clear. Yeah. Well, he yeah. Has, he has to clear, otherwise he's... Just not winning this game at all, but it's all. The, maybe it's a. Maybe you should use 
the bomb first to kill the one one to see when one deals damage, but yeah. at the same time, do you, you have can to use combo to clear, clear the, the yes. Palter Shredder first with the with the bomb? Do we really have to clear? Maybe you just yellow it and like shape, you can't draw one damage. Shape shift, shape shift at face, and then go with like oh. force nature to face as well. Maybe uh, I don't. What do you think about the trade into the Shredder there? Would you not have killed the one one instead? Well, that allows him to always trade because yeah, that true. Be opens up the air. With Oh, that's and nice. Uh, sorry, then 2 HP. But it still doesn't set up lethal for next turn. Yeah, it doesn't. And then now Tyrion might be really good. Oh. Uh, that was an interesting choice. I'm not sure. Oh, oh my! Oh, really no. does it again! <laughs> the calls. Uh -oh. oh, man. That's tough. Uh, but that there's has to still be combo. Yeah, then, obviously. Is, but Ashbringer. Is combo like, enough, though? Will he not still die? So if he combos through Tyrion, he has to use his face to kill the... Does he have to use the face to kill the 1-1? One, one? Yeah. Which yeah. means he takes so one it. damage. AK and he can't hero power to gain the one damage back. The game. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That was intense. So AK wandered twice with Reno Lock, destroying the, the zoo and the Paladin, and eventually losing it to the Ardeus Druid, and now having the Paladin with Tyrion secrets. A really intense match. That was really good. Good start for AK Wonder there. I mean, like I said, that was a uh, really intense, and uh, it's just the arena lock doing the work there, to be honest. Because once you uh, once you two nil up, and then you have secret piled in to fall back on, you, you always feel good, right? Like it's the deck can just win like, out of nowhere. As long as you get an okay curve, it should be fine. But that that last match, both players being one off lethal. But, oh, yeah, that was intense madness. Lothar, any any words about that match? Well, it was really good match to watch and the commentator so i'm hoping that all the matches will be looking like that it's cool to see new decks uh bringing um just being a, a consistent force and uh, last year's standing like the winner jackson uh it's always fun to cast those matches because there are so many things going on right there's 30 different cards in a deck who would have thought that there would be a thing in harson yeah. right yeah because exactly harson is about 30 cards deck so they'll be as consistent as possible, so you want to put 15 cards in that, yeah. so you have always a consistent plan on what you will be doing with your deck. But then Reno Jackson gets pr printed, and uh, you you have to get 30 different cards. It's really interesting. Could they ever do a deck, like try to incentivize a different type of deck building with another method? Like, is there another way to force you to, like, the number of beasts in your deck, right? Yes, uh, the that, number of demons, the number of. And if anything right. can happen, it's kind of different as well. Right, anything can happen does incentivize you to be, but specific types of Murlocs as well, not yeah. any Murloc. Um, and well, it you can mean still play anything can happen in a Murloc deck. It's still okay because yeah. usually you run out of steam, but that replenishes it. So I guess. Uh, yeah, 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 but Reno Jackson is nice. Yeah, because in this uh, Chinese style ladder, there was a deck that someone took that was pretty much half mid range, half Murlocs. And played anything. one anything, but it played Murloc Knights. Yeah. So I'm guessing the idea is instead of trying to like one turn kill someone, you just want to say, okay, well, late game, I'm going to play 10 mana and refill my yeah. board, and then you have to deal with that again. So there's a couple of options. I want a demon card that does that. Either way, I'm pretty happy that Reno even exists in the first place. Um, that card is absolutely amazing. I just love For it. For me, the MVP of this match was Sir Finley Murgleton just yes. helping with the comeback with the Reno lock. I don't know if you've seen that, but basically, uh, Finley happened from... Um, Peddler. From Peddler. For Peddler. And then um, AK Wonder actually chose the healing hero power, and he was able to come back versus Zoo from, like, free health. Oh, that is nasty. That is, that is amazing. Yeah. It's Especially because he played Peddler on turn two, and yeah. uh, myself and Lothar I, I were like... I caught the you, beginning you, of it. Uh, yeah, you so picking Finley on turn yeah. two with Handlock, or, like, or with Reno Lock at the time. And um, he didn't have, like, an early, early game. Yeah. So it was really weird at that point, because it was very risky. He didn't have a clear. He didn't have like the other option was to get a two-one minion with Tondo, which I can remember tournament attendee, yeah. right? Sure. And uh, that will allow him to clear the the the, the haunted creeper. At, so that's always something because he had a, also a zombie chow in the in the game. Yeah. But uh, it, it was a really risky thing to pick the defending, but it turned out to be great. All right. So that was a great match to start Insomnia to Silver Championship, and we'll have more matches for you guys. But for now, I think we're ready to go into the break, so stay tuned for more Hearthstone after that. <laughs> 